He is the Dhamma. He is the teacher, the explainer, the carrier of meaning, the giver of the deathless. I have shivers. Coming from uh, the Western world, there's, uh, there's one thing that I've noticed that is uh, when we talk about the, the faculties, the indriyas, everybody's the, the pancha indriyani. Uh, everybody's familiar with that, I'm, I'm assuming. And uh, the Buddha says there's these two, these, two, these two faculties must be balanced, this of faith and this of wisdom, sadda and panya. And I think they both have these uh, inherent strength and also weaknesses uh, because uh, one needs to be balanced with the other uh, for it to be complete. In the West, one of the problems that we have is people think too much about the Dhamma. They try to logically figure it out too much without actually practicing often or just try to see it as uh, an equation that needs to be solved or something purely philosophical. And sometimes there, there needs to be more faith because otherwise there cannot be progress on the path. If there's no faith, if there's no conviction when we wake up in the morning, if we don't have faith in what we're doing, then we can't do anything. We need that sadha. Of course, please don't make any general assumptions of what I'm saying. Uh, I have friends and students that are also the faith type in, in, in the West, but generally I would say that the, the main stream of what we encounter is mostly mental and like philosophies and all that. And I feel like in, in Asia and uh, in the East, there's a lot more uh, of a faith culture. And for me, personally, I'm more of a faith person. <laughs> so actually I feel more at home here. <laughs> I, I sometimes wonder why I was born over there. <laughs> but that's how it is and that, that was karma. But uh, the, the faith, faith also is very powerful because it is that power to believe, that power, that forward drive that brings us forward and makes us take action on the path. and. That faith is such a beautiful thing, and we can just remember the, the, the qualities of the Buddha, the Dhamma and Sangha, and have that beautiful faith arising. But then also, to a certain extent, it can become detrimental also. Like, like Panya, to a certain extent, when you think too much, it becomes detrimental, because then 
it's hard to practice and let go. And the faith, when it's too much, then if, if you just believe everything everybody says to you, <laughs> and then these people say things that are not really um, conducive for you, then, then it creates problems. That's an example. Then if, you, if, you, if, you, if we start to practice something that we, do, you know, we just heard uh, without thinking, without reflecting upon it, then it, becomes, it might become a hindrance because who knows? Who knows what this, this practice is? And so the Buddha was uh, such a genius to offer this to us and say, you know, here are these two faculties. We need to bring them together. And why I start with this tonight is because why is the Buddha the greatest teacher? I could tell you all kinds of things. But really, what we're going to talk about tonight is we're going to go in depth into understanding why. Why is the Buddha the greatest teacher? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not interested in telling you something to, for you to believe in. I don't want you to walk out the door saying you have to believe that the Buddha is the greatest teacher. <laughs> so that's why I said that uh, at first. But I'd like us to explore tonight why? Why is the Buddha the greatest teacher? And where do we find that? In a very, very simple uh, sutta that probably everybody will know. And very uh, simple yet to the core explanation of, of the qualities of the Buddha. Uh, <laughs> that was a little salmon era taught, taught me in uh, Bangalore yes. when I was staying at Mahabodhi. Samastahe, understand. <laughs> Good. 
And so I'd just like to um, th share a, a, just a brief sequence from the Madhu Pindika Sutta. This is found in the Madhjima Nikaya. Um, this is number 18? 18, yes. Okay, everybody's got their, their phones on, good. <laughs> and this is only, um, it, it does, it's not really related to the sutta, the teaching itself, but it's more because of uh, the, the beauty of, as I said, I'm also a faith kind of person, so I really like when, when these um, scenarios happen in the suttas where uh, somebody is just so in awe with the Buddha's qualities. And it, it's an explanation from Mahakachana, uh, who says, who has a group of monks coming to him for explanation when they were just talking to Bu the Buddha. And basically he says, why are you coming to me? <laughs> you had the Buddha in front of you. But I'll um, just read it uh, succinctly and then we can explore. Friends, just as a person who wanted heartwood, who was looking for heartwood, who was walking in search of heartwood, would walk by a great tree standing thick with heartwood. And he would pass over the roots and pass over the trunk. He would, and he would think to look for heartwood amongst the branches and the leaves. So you come to me, venerable ones, when you were face to face with the teacher. Having passed the awakened one by, now you ask me to explain the meaning of this, their question. Friends, the awakened one knows what is to be known. He sees what is to be seen. He is vision. He is knowledge. He is the Dhamma. And he, here is interesting. He is Brahma. He is the teacher, the explainer, the carrier of meaning, the giver of the deathless, the master of the Dhamma, the Tathagata. It was at that time that you should have asked the Awakened One to explain, and you should have remembered what he would have said to you. Maybe we'll have the, the Pali. Yeah. Have you found it? Uh, yeah, it's, found it's hidden in uh, there. I'm 
म्हणजे बुद्ध कोण आहे बुद्ध कोण आहे जानन जाना की पसन पसती चक्कू भूतो ज्ञान भूतो धम्म भूतो ब्रह्म भूतो म्हणजे आता अर्थ सांगतील कोणते सो द पाली वर्ड आर ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द बुद्ध ॲज जानन जाना की ओके पसन पसती द वन हू सी इज द सी इज दक्कू भूतो ज्ञान भूतो धम्म भूतो ब्रह्म भूतो वत्ता पवत्ता अथस्य निम्ने का अमतस्य ताका धम्मस्मी तथा गतो ही बुद्धांची जी आपण नेहमी बोलतो ना नेहमी आपलं कसं असतं की ती पिसो भगवा आरण सम्मा समशिर त्याच्या व्यतिरिक्त हे जे वर्णन केलेलं आहे हे कुणी केलेलं आहे महापच्चा तर ते आपल्याला म्हणते आता समजून सांगा मी पालिक तर सांगितलं कळलं ना दिस How did you feel? How did you feel when you heard this? And this is the sadda part of, of, of us. We're going to go to the panya after. We're going to go through it and explain. But how did you feel when you hear, heard it? I, I saw a few, people's, a few people's eyes open and smiling coming up. Because it's very inspiring, isn't it? How beautiful is that? He is the Dhamma, he is the teacher, the explainer, the carrier of meaning, the giver of the deathless. I have shivers. <laughs> the master of the Dhamma, the Tathagata. And so for me, when I hear, when I hear these words, I, I just see the Buddha, I feel the Buddha. in all of his magnificence and it's such a wonderful thing to just ponder upon this these qualities and just there we have a little bit of a glimpse of how maha kachana who was a narahant shravaka at the time of the buddha how he was putting him so high and describing him as a narahant as the buddha so i find this quite uh just this is a a really uh, one of my favorite meditations <laughs> just remembering these words and now if we go into more explanation uh, maybe you, you want to translate that first mante he manta ki he dusta aiku na sangta va kase share eta ki buddha kase ahe baron na manje hi kiti shraddha ahe mahakachane ji ki te buddha na kase te buddha cha varnan kase kartat ki aple dolya samor buddha जाता जितकी जबरदस्त श्रद्धा आहे त्या श्रद्धेनेच महाकच्चायनी केलेली आहे आणि ती श्रद्धा आपल्याला त्यांचं जे वर्णन आहे ते ऐकल्यावर आपल्या डोळ्यासमोर बुद्ध कसे आहेत ते लगेच येतं आणि ही श्रद्धा आहे त्याच्याकडे पहिया कशी आहे ते पण कळतंच आहे पण हे जर समजून घ्यायचं असेल थोडा वेळ लागेल असं म्हणाले पण मी म्हटलं समजावून घ्या गुड ओके गुड वॉल एक्सप्लेन The first explanation is, is how, how it, may, it can make us feel. And the more we practice, the more 
the more when we hear these words and these qualities, the more we start to resonate with them. That's one thing that's happening in the West. They're trying to kind of like clear out the Dhamma. It's called like um, pragmatic Buddhism or pragmatic Dharma. And they're kind of trying to clear out the Buddha out of the, the Dhamma because there's not that deep understanding of how profound his awakening was and how how beautiful these qualities, why we keep repeating those qualities is, is for a reason. <laughs> it's not for no reason. And who, who felt this pamojang jayati? Uh, who felt the gladness arise? Who felt pamudita sapiti jayati? Uh, who felt the joy coming up? Piti manasakayo pasambati. Pasadakayo? Sukang Patisangadi. Oh, Sukino Chittang Samadhyati. And then if you bask long enough in that, yeah, there you go. <laughs> hmm. And this is one of the factors of stream entry. Uh, did, uh, everybody knows this? One of the factors of stream entry is when you hear this, for sure, really strong gladness and confidence and sadda arises because you know you know it's true <laughs> so that's why i say the more you practice the more you will feel that <laughs> Good. So everybody's coming to the retreat next next time. Everybody just. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Explore that in our own experience. Good. Uh, yes, yes. Keep raising your hands. <laughs> good, good. Come and see Ehi Pasiko. We'll talk about that in, in a moment. Those who have done will not take them. Right? <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> mm. puppy has done a lot of merits in the past. <laughs> and so, Bhagava Janang Janati. That which is to be known, or that which is, yeah, that which is to be known. That he knows. Yes. I mean, in English, it's, it's always a bit of a hurdle to translate <laughs> Pali. 
So your, your language, Marathi, is actually a lot closer, even though it's not perfect. Uh, it's a lot closer than English. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know Marathi yet, so please forgive me. So, Janang Janati. So he knows what is to be known. Do you know when he was, remember when he was telling the bhikkhus, he, he was sitting in the forest, on the forest floor, and the bhikkhus were in front of him, and he grabbed a handful of leaves, and he said, what is more, monks, the handful of leaves in my hand, or the, hand, the, the leaves on the ground? And the monk said, Bhante, there's more leaves on the ground. And he said, this is the same thing with what I've taught you. I've only taught you this much. Because... <laughs> because to be a Buddha, one has to know a lot more than just what is to be known for awakening, for Nibbana. There's another sequence when he says, I haven't declared that, I haven't said anything about this because it doesn't lead to Viraga, it doesn't lead to Nibbana, it doesn't lead to liberation. Of course, there's a lot more in this world, in these universes. And even the science is backing it up now. That there's, it's a multiverse. And it's in the suttas also that there's more than one Brahmaloka. There's more than one universe. And we can get lost for a long, long time, actually, for all of samsara, trying to figure out all these things. But the Buddha comes and he just understood what is to be understood. Janang Janati. Passam Passati. Along the same lines, I would say. But I, uh, now I'm having a blank. Was it here that I talk about this? Because I gave another discord in Wasai. And I can't remember if I talked about the mental states also at the previous discourse. Because I, I talked about it in Vasai, but so basically what did the Buddha teach what, what was his main concern was it uh, you know I said uh, was, was it when we talk about the Four Noble Truths is it because uh, like water is dukkha like this microphone stand is dukkha what is he talking about what is dukkha in relation to what is it because the floor or no The mind, yeah. What the Buddha was concerned about was mind and mental states. And that there was two kinds of mental states, two states of minds that have very different impacts on the mind. Anybody can tell me? Two sides. Kusala, yes, kusala. And akusala, yeah, good. Good. I mean, this is a whole Dhamma discourse in itself, so I'm not going to go very deep into that. But by telling these two things apart, and this is also the definition of Panya in many ways, because what the Buddha taught was Bhavana. Bhavana is wholesome mental development. So basically, we're getting rid of unwholesome states, Akusala Dhamma, and we're cultivating wholesome ones. That bring peace, that bring collectedness of mind, that bring good results, and that bring liberation. They are synonymous. Wholesome states are synonymous. As I was explaining, the Buddha calls metta. He doesn't just call the Brahma Viharas metta, karuna, mudita, upekka. He calls them metta cheto vimutti. Karuna cheto vimutti. Mudita cheto vimutti. Upekka cheto vimutti. So they are liberations of the mind, in and of themselves. And so passang passati is that is he sees these things for what they are, for what they actually are. Yata bhutanyana dasana. So telling these two things apart. Sadhguru, 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 S
माझ्या हातात पाणं जास्त आहे की खाली जमिनीवर पडलेली पाणं जास्त आहे तर सगळे म्हणाले तर जमिनीवर पडलेली पाणं जास्त आहे तर बुद्ध तेच म्हणाले की मी तुम्हाला जे शिकवलंय बरोबर आहे की नाही ते फक्त हातातल्या पानाने एवढं आहे कारण तेच तुमच्या कामाचं आहे निबालांना जाण्यासारखं पण मला जे माहिती आहे ते या खाली पडलेल्या पानाने एवढं आहे ते तुम्हाला काही गरजेचं नाही आहे जाणण्यासाठी तर बुद्धांना खूप जास्त माहिती असते खूप जास्त जाणणे जाणलेलं असतं आत्ताचा हे जग जर आपण आता युनिवर्स म्हणतो पण जसं बोलते म्हणाले की ते युनिवर्स नाही ते मल्टीवर्स आहे म्हणजे एकच जग नाही आहे तर असे खूप लोक आहेत हे सगळ्यांना आता आता सायन्सला पण कळायला लागले की एक काय सौरमंडल आहे त्याच्या पलीकडे दुसरं आहे वगैरे असे आणि लोक आहेत प्लेअर्स आहेत काय जे काय आहे तर हे बुद्धाने आधीच सांगितलेलं आहे त्यांनी ते सगळं जाणलं पण होतं पण त्यांनी बुद्ध होताना ते सगळं गरजेचं असतं पण निपाणाला जायचं जेवढी माहिती पाहिजे तेवढीच त्यांनी आपल्याला दिली कारण त्याच्या पलीकडे जर आपण गेलो ना तर त्याच्यामध्ये आपण भरकटतो अडकतो कुठेतरी हरवून जातो त्याच्यामुळे बुद्ध म्हणाले एवढं समजून घेतलं हे तुमच्या कामाचं आहे तर हेच तुम्हाला दुःखाच्या बाहेर काढण्यासाठी पुरेसं आहे मग दुसरी गोष्ट जेव्हा ते म्हणत आहेत पसन पसती तर बुद्धांना बुद्धांनी काय बघितलं बुद्ध काय बघतात बुद्ध काय बघतात तर म्हणते म्हणाले की हे पूर्ण असं लेक्चरच आहे पण त्याचे मी थोडक्यात सांगतो की बघण्यासारखं जे आहे यथावृत्त ज्ञानच असताना जे आहे ते बघण्यासारखं ज्या गोष्टी आहेत त्या बुद्धांना दिसतात जे आपल्याला समजत नाही जे आपल्याला कळत नाही आपल्याला सगळं सारखंच दिसतं बरोबर आहे की नाही कारण आपल्याकडे तेवढी पहिया नाही तर आपण घोबळ मनाने जर डिवाईड कर केलं की त्याची त्याला दोन भागात विभागलं तर एक कुसल आहे आणि एक अकुसल आहे आणि ती पहिया जी आहे की नाही हीच आपल्याला कुसल काय आणि अकुसल काय याच्यातला परत करायला शिकवते बरोबर ना ती पहिया असते जर आपल्याला कुसल आणि अकुसलामधला फरक कळत नाही तर आपल्याला आपल्याकडे पहिया नाही आणि कुसल अकुसल म्हणजे काय तर आपल्याकडे दोन्ही आहेत बरोबर ना मग आपल्याला काय करायचं असतं आपल्याला काय बघायचं असतं की आपल्याला कुसल कसे वाढवायचे आणि अकुसल कसे कमी करायचे किंवा घालून टाकायचे ते जेव्हा आपल्याला कळतं तेव्हा आपली पहिया डेव्हलप करायला सुरू होते किंवा तेव्हा आपल्याला कळायला येतं तेच पहिया आहे ते बघण्याचं ज्ञान जे आहे तर ते बुद्धांना सगळं यथाभूत जसं आहे तसं आपल्याला कसं कुठलीही गोष्ट कुशल आणि अकुसल दिसते बरोबर आहे की नाही ते वेगळं करता येत नाही तर तेच वेगळं करून बघण्याचे जी दृष्टी आहे त्यालाच आपण बुद्धाचं ज्ञान म्हणतो त्याला पत्सम जे बघण्यासारखं आहे ते सगळं बघितलं जातं कोणाकडनं बुद्धांकडनं ते बुद्धांची ते बुद्धांचं ज्ञान आहे Good. <laughs> Now the interesting bit here, the interesting phase. Chakku bhuto, jnana bhuto, dhamma bhuto, brahma bhuto. And here this, <laughs> in English it's tricky. <laughs> But really, again that is so beautiful. Chakku bhuto, he is vision. or he has attained to vision he embodies vision this vision that pasang pasati he sees what is to be seen he has attained to the vision samma ditti jnana buddho same here that that knowledge he has attained he's he embodies it he's just he is that knowledge He is the Dhamma, Dhamma Bhuto. He has become the Dhamma. Uh, when the, the Buddha said, when you see me, you see the Dhamma. When you see the Dhamma, you see me. And Brahma Bhuto, he, he's attained to Brahma because at that time, everybody wanted to be one with Brahma. Everybody wanted to uh, be in union with Brahma. And he knew the path. He knew the path and he was teaching it, Brahma Viharas, to, to Brahmins who were really keen on knowing that path. He, well, he thought that's better that they try to do that than anything else, <laughs> so, so let them have it. <laughs> and then if they had good faculties, he would bring them further. So, so Brahma Bhutto, he has attained to Brahma. Stop looking. <laughs> yes, yes, please go.
<laughs> they came for the talk. <laughs> He's like, why? <laughs> Okay, okay, TK. Chalo. Vata pavata atasa ninnata amatasa data. So he is the teacher, the explainer, the giver of meaning. Atasa ninnata. Ninnata also inclining or just um, dispensing of the meaning dispenser of the meaning amatasa amatasa data the giver of the deathless dhamma sami tathagato sami the master the great sage in every time in sri lanka there's a tradition every time we pay respect to our elders uh, we we have a formula we say maya katang punyang sami na anumoditabang so Maya uh, katang punyang from my merits, samina anumodi tabbang, that the master rejoice in my own merits. Samina katang punyang maayang da tabbang. So, and please, pass master, pass on your merits also to me. And so, there's this exchange, and that word is sami. This, this is the word that I, we find here. Um, and then Tathagato. So. Nantor Vatta Pavatta Atvasa Ninneta Mamatasa Dhaka Dhamma Sami Tathagato Vatta Pavatta Vatta Mande Je Santar Je Sandi Kade Pasar Tapavatta Na Apan Mande Shabda Apasuna Je Bolta Je Sandi Kade Pasar Tapavatta Ninna Ninneta Je Sabra Artha Artha Nim Sandi Sangare Dhamma 
टीचर बदल कि टीचर है बदल कि मी जे मेरिट के लिए मजा टीचरला मिलू दे टीचर मी जे के लिए मजापर्यंत पोचू दे प्रत्येक वे कारण टीचर आ स्टूडंट रिनेशन ये फार तक बगत अपने इकड़े स्वामी मटल कि तो Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> It was different then. <laughs> yes. That's that's also why I kind of like uh, Sri Lanka because they've kept some of some of that Pali alive in in the mind. So they're. Swami is also uh, master, but that yes. that comes into you know uh, to the husband. Ah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Master. Ah. Ah okay okay let's not go there <laughs> I think we'll just stop here <laughs> Swami okay <laughs> That's good that's good I keep learning really interesting things in India That's good Yes yes okay okay we'll just keep going then <laughs> Okay So now we've developed both sadha and panya. We've analyzed it and we've felt how it feels. And now we'll we'll do a little chant together because what we'll analyze next is well analyze or investigate or explore altogether is uh, the Buddha vandana, the Dhamma vandana, and the Sangha vandana, which basically is coming back over and over and over again in the suttas and. It's kind of a really good starting point for us to to begin with, um, and I think you were saying, Doctor, that there's the courses haven't started yet, right? So this is the very beginning, and yeah, yeah. We, okay. And so uh, I think the the ITP so is uh, is a very wonderful place to to start because it's such an essential, and it really goes to the core of the Buddha's qualities. So all together, then we can. Uh, Start with Namo Tassa three times, and then we'll do the Buddha Dhamma Sangha Vandana. So. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Iti Piso Bhagavaraham Samma Sambuddho Vijacharana Sampanno Sugato Loka Vidu Muttaro Purisa Dhamma Sarati Sattva Deva Manusanam Buddha Bhagavati Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sanditi Ko Akali Ko Ehi Pasi Ko Upanai Ko Pachatam Vedita Bo Supati Panno Bhagavato Savaka Sango Ujupati Panno Bhagavato Savaka Sango Nyaya Pati Panno Bhagavato Savaka Sango Sami Chipati Panno Bhagavato Savaka Sango Yadiran Chattari Sayugani Atta Purisa Pugala Isa Bhagavato Savaka Sango Ahuneyo Pahuneyo Dakh 
Kinayo, Angelica Ranio, Anutaran Punya Ketang Lokasati. Okay, well done. Itipiso Bhagawa Araham Samma Sambuddho. So, why is the Buddha the greatest teacher? We loop back again to, our, to the beginning. How many kinds of Buddhas are there? Uh, somebody says four. Good. 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 Two. Pachika Buddha, Samma Sambuddha. What is the difference? Ah. Yes. Good. So there is a Buddha that can arise. And to be a Buddha, first of all, we need there. Ah. Whoops. <laughs> good, good. Oh, it's hot. Garam. Garam. Oh, garam chai. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And what does it take? I should have started with this first. What, what does it mean to be a Buddha? What does it mean to be a Buddha? How, how can one be a Buddha? What does it mean? How does one become a Buddha? Highest knowledge. We have a highest knowledge. The person who first found the way to Nibbana. Yes, yes. And did they have somebody else to tell them? Ah. Yes, yes. So you have almost all the, the answer. Just needed a little bit more. Good, good. Very good. No, that's all good answers. Uh, to be a Buddha, what that means is that there has to be no other Buddha. And that person has to break through to Nibbana and complete liberation without the help or teaching of another Buddha, so by their own selves. Sometimes I like to contemplate upon that and I think about, because the Buddha's teaching, the Dhamma has changed my life so much and for me now it's, it feels like there's, there, there couldn't be something else, it, it just couldn't. And Sometimes when I think about how the Buddha understood all of this by himself, <laughs> it's another point that just blows my mind. Because I study and practice this teaching and I learn a lot through the Buddha's words, but I'm just amazed that somebody could even figure this out on their own. Uh, that's just something that completely something else. So that's what that means to be a Buddha. I 
ते मला सांगितल्यावर सुद्धा समजायला एवढं हे होत आहे काय म्हणताय किंवा डिफिकल्ट आहे इतक्या लोकांना अजूनही किती माहिती नाही समजत नाही आहे ते मला जेव्हा आता थोडं थोडं समजायला लागलंय किंवा मला जेव्हा असं कळतं तेव्हा हे आपल्याला माहीत नसताना एवढं शिकवलेलं असताना एवढी पुस्तकं असताना सगळा अभ्यास करून सुद्धा आपल्याला कळत नाही हे स्वतःच्या ज्ञानाने स्वतःच्या प्रयत्नाने स्वतःच्या कष्टाने शोधणं किती कठीण प्रयोग काम आहे हे आपल्याला लक्षात येत नाही बरोबर ना ते त्यामुळे ते किती कष्टाचं काम आहे आपल्या सगळ्या सगळ्यांना वाटतं सहा वर्षात कष्ट करून उद्धव झाले पण त्याच्या मागच्या त्या सगळ्या पारमिता त्यांचे ते बोधिसत्व म्हणून आयुष्य कोणीच लक्षात घेत नाही बरोबर आहे ना तर आपण जर हे सगळं बघितलं तर बुद्ध होणं किती कठीण आहे किती कष्टाचं आहे आणि जे आता आपल्याला सहज वाटतं जे आपल्याला माहिती नाही आहे आणि आपण तसंच जर समजत गेलो असतो तर आपल्याला काहीच करता येत नाही बरोबर ना बुद्धांची टीचिंग असताना सुद्धा काही पण चालता येत नाही कळलं का तर जेव्हा माहीतच नव्हतं तेव्हा त्याच्यावरनं चालून पुढपर्यंत कसं जाता येणार होतं बरोबर ना किती किती मोठी गोष्ट करून ठेवलेली आहे त्याची आपल्याला लक्षात येत नाही तेच म्हणते सांगा And so, and now here we're talking about some uh, some Buddha. Now coming back to our the difference between the two, the difference between the two we heard is that one of them, the Pachika Buddha, can understand enough to break through to Nibbana, to break through to full awakening, on their own without the help of another teacher, but. They don't know enough to teach others. Or they can try a little bit, but it's, it's, not, it's not the same. Because there's also evidence in some of the texts that some of the Pachika Buddhas of the past had some kind of following, but it, it wasn't, it's not, it's not a big, it, it's, they, they're not um, knowledgeable enough to really make this path clear. And so, Here we're talking about this Samma, Sam Buddha. And this is also why the Buddha was the greatest teacher, is that he, like the handful of leaves, he had to try all of these other things to finally find what was actually needed for Nibbana, for full awakening. But because he knew all of these other things, he was very able and capable of leading and teaching others because he knew, he knew by his own experience and he knew how other people's experience was because he had tried it, he had been there and so he was really the Buddha was also such a empathetic person he was uh, you know, he, w- he was the embodiment of compassion he was uh, I-, I love this word anukampang like resonating with other people because he had been there He, he knew what this experience was like and he could teach you how to move forward. So that's why he was such an excellent teacher that he knew all of these things, all of these different kinds of people, all of these states, all of these qualities and he was able to explain them. जाणलं होतं समजून घेतलं होतं आणि त्याच्यासाठी त्यांना बराच वेळ लागला पण 
So all of this, what we just talked about, that is that Vidya. Vidya is that he knows all of this. He's done it all. And he knows all the differences. But that Vidya is not his only quality. It's Vidya Charana Sampanno. And so that is very, very, very important. Because nowadays also this is something we see a lot. There's a lot of Vidya, but there's not a whole lot of Charana. <laughs> so he embodied this teaching. He didn't say something and then practice something else. He didn't say don't kill and went killing people. He didn't say don't steal and went stealing things. He didn't say uh, abstain from sexual uh, misconduct and then start doing sexual misconduct. So that's why he was such an excellent teacher is that he was saying something and he was doing it. <laughs> And for me, that was also very important in my path, was to actually find people, and not only people, but find a teacher and people that practice what they teach. And the Buddha was Vija Charana Sampanno. He was known to practice what he teach. And this is why he laid down also for the monks the Vinaya. Uh, of course, there is the Panchasilas, the Atasilas. Um, but I just, uh, on that note, I think it's, for me, it's something that I find is very little known in, in right now, it, whether it's in the West or everywhere I, I've, I've gone, except in like, like really good Vinaya monasteries. Why was the Buddha, why was the Vinaya laid down? And that's a big part of Charana. Why, why do we have to follow these virtues? Would the monks have to follow all of these virtues? How many monastic rules in the Patimokkha? 227. 227. Wow. You're great. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't actually, I don't often get the, the, the right answer that quick. <laughs> often. So very good. <laughs> and so... The Buddha laid down the Vinaya for 10 reasons, which he explains at the very beginning of the Vinaya. And one is for the excellence of the Sangha. The second is for the well-being of the Sangha, the excellence Sangha Sututtaya. Then Sangha Pasuttaya, for the well-being of the Sangha. Dumakunang Puggalanang Nigahaya, to control ill-controlled monks or to to restrain the monks that can't behave properly because there are some. Uh, you know, at the time of the Buddha, uh, at the very beginning, it took 20 years for the, the Buddha to lay down the first rule. And then, because they were all arahants, they were all very virtuous people and there was no problem really. <laughs> but as the teaching got more and more popular, well, you know, just having the requisites, having nice robes, food every day, a shelter, uh, medicine, was a lot, was luxurious, you know, very luxurious. So a lot of people started to ordain for wrong reasons. Uh, and that is one of the reasons why the, the Vinaya was, was laid down. Then, Pesalanang Bhikkhunang Pasuvihaya, for the comfort of well-behaved monks. Because for well-behaved monks, it doesn't matter. The Vinaya is actually helpful. It's not really that much more complicated. And uh, one of the things that I've noticed when I first flew from Canada to Sri Lanka, to my, my monastery in the forest there, the first thing I, I noticed was how easy it was to live and practice there. Because everything is in order. It's all, everybody is following the Vinaya. There is all, all of these rules are set for communal harmony and it's really conducive to meditation, to harmony. Of course, there, there are things that are unavoidable. There always are, but from going to a place that has very no, little knowledge of Vinaya, of practice, of Dhamma, to an actual uh, monastery where the Vinaya, you can feel it, you can feel that there's a goodness, there's virtue in that place. Nobody's going to steal. Everybody is 
afraid to do something wrong. They're not, they're not, they're gonna like, before taking a sugar that's been offered already and it's written, somebody's gonna like ask and like check to make sure it's been offered so that they're not like stealing or taking what is not given. And so when you see that, it's just so inspiring. It's like, wow, that person is like even worried about their sugar being offered, like even though it's written. <laughs> So it, it really brings this atmosphere of confidence. You, you feel at ease and everybody is uh, uh, congenial or as, as much as they can. There are, there are rules in Divinia where if it was decided by Sangha that this or that action was to be done, nobody can argue with it. It's closed. We don't talk about it. It's, it's done. We've talked about it, we've deal with it, it's put aside, and now we move on. And so these rules are amazing for communal harmony. And they, they help us actually turn the mirror from outside to inside also. And so for the... Oh, yes, yes, yes. I just go. <laughs> Yes, you can okay. if you want to refer. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was going to ask you to read. <laughs> yes. So, Kachamwe, Udani Jeva, Hesaro, Munde, Acharan Karnecha Vela, Borona, so Vinayka, Nirman Kedela, Hesamasaki, Vinayka Kedela, Hesaka Matuasai, Vinayka Saki. There are many doses of Kanis Vinayaji, rule of Vikunsaki. Yeah. 
I know I, I haven't made it there. Oh, so yes. Just <laughs> <laughs> well, the fifth one. Yes. And then. I, I yes. told them that up to four. Yes, good. Very good. Okay. Everybody's still awake? Yes. Good. Okay. Huh. <laughs> what? <laughs> good. Ah, good, good smiles. Ah, some people came on retreat, I can tell. Oh, <laughs> I can tell who they are. Good. <laughs> okay, so I, I didn't mean to eternalize myself on this, on this topic, so I'll, I'll try to, to just be, cover them more quickly now. Ditta dhamma nang asawa nang sangwaraya. So to restrain present ditta dhamma, present asavas to distractions and so that's see a lot sometimes people think that these virtues or the, the patimokha is to is only to restrain asavas but actually it's it, that's one of the things but it's much more than that and then sangparayikanang asavanang patigataya so to protect from future uh, distractions and impurities and all that so it's, it's, it is a protection also at the same time. And the sila, the pancha sila, the atta sila is also the same thing. Uh, apasanang wa pasadaya. To give faith to the people without faith. And so this is a place where it starts to be interesting for me anyways. Because this is touching upon what I was talking about, the vidya charana. Uh, it's very important for us to embody what we talk. We can say we're Buddhist all over the place, but then if we're not following the virtue, if we're not following the path, then what is it for? We're not really doing much. We're not practicing what we're saying we are. And so, pasananang biyo bhavaya. So to increase faith in the people who already have the faith. So the, the vinya is really important. It's, the vinya is like the lifeblood of this teaching because it is what is keeping it intact and alive. The, I really love this simile where the Buddha says uh, the vinya is like the string in, in the mala or the string tying all the flowers together, all of the dhamma together because otherwise it would just blow in the wind. People would just take the Dhamma, take some bits of the teaching and then just practice that and start talking about other things around it and practice other things. But the Vinaya actually is the embodiment of the, the, Buddha, the, the Buddha Dhamma, of how we're supposed to actually behave when, when we actually practice this. So it is protecting the Dhamma, keeping it together and arising faith in people. Um, you know, when, when you see a monk not behaving well and just uh, not following any rules and, uh, you know, basically just wearing the robes, basically wearing robes and bowl, how, how, does it, how does it look? It looks pretty terrible. It's not very, it's not very inspiring at all, actually. And so that's, that's unfortunate, but when you, for me, when I first saw Vinaya monks who were very well behaved and very um, uh, aware of their behavior, their out outward behavior uh, also, uh, I gained a lot of confidence because I could see like they, they were afraid of stealing something. They were afraid of, and so that could tell me that, well, you know, if they're afraid of doing that, I mean, they're probably not doing some crazy things, you know, uh, whenever they go back to wherever they come from. So um, it was really inspiring and it was really uh, beautiful to see also the Sangha just moving and like just being well behaved, not, not just doing all kinds of things that are not really becoming. Uh, so, Saddhamma Titya, Titiya. So for the long lasting of the sasana, for the long lasting of, of the, the true dhamma, and vinaya nuggahaya, for the fostering of discipline. So all of these 10 qualities is that charana also. And this is not only for the monks, because the Buddha advised so much more, even for the lay people, even for 
you know, he advised like what kind of livelihood, what kind of livelihood we, we should look into, uh, and how we should behave at home. And he, he gave many discourses. Of course, there's no vinya for, for lay people, but there is definitely guidelines. And so the way we look outwardly, our charana is very important. And so if we really care about the sasana and we really care about the Buddha's teaching, then we will also care about how we behave with others. That's... <laughs>
Oh, good. Very good. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Because it's really good. It's really good. Because we never think for us. It is for us. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. No, it's for everybody. It's for the whole sasana. Mm -hmm. It's the lifeblood. Uh, yeah. And actually, I like to... Uh, another really uh, perspective that's interesting about the Vinaya is that it's actually the first pitaka. It's the first pitaka, right? And when you think about it, it's because that you cannot expect anyone that just takes on the robes to become an arahant the next day <laughs> or to, you know, to know all of this teaching. It's just the beginning of the training. So the first thing that matters is that they at least behave well. <laughs> so, so that you, okay, here are some things that you, you can't cross these lines, you know. You can't go beyond that. You can't say these things. You can't, like, and at least then there's going to be some kind of good behavior. And that's going to keep the Dhamma alive properly. And that's why the Vinaya is first. Now, the Vinaya is not the all in all of this teaching, but it is very important. It's like the boat that is kind of holding the whole thing. So first we learn, and this is actually, you're reading the notes from the Sri Kalyani Yogashrama, the, my tradition, Galdua. This is our Vinaya exam, uh, the notes from our Vinaya exam. <laughs> so um, usually for a whole year we, get, uh, we have a class, we have a course, um, and then we, it's a whole book. You have to, yeah, you, you have to know quite well uh, the, the Vinaya. So uh, those, those were my, my notes that I studied. <laughs> and so, uh, actually, spending that whole year in Sri Lanka was really uh, was really interesting. Just learning Vinaya in the forest in my kuti, and um, I was actually hoping that I, I I would be there for your pilgrimage, and then maybe we could all come to uh, to, to my monastery in the forest and see visit. But it's going to be an another year. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Anyways. So, who's going? Who is going for the Sri Lanka Dhamma tour? Yatra. Dhamma Yatra. Ah, good, good. Few people. Ah, yes, 45. Yes, ah, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. You already have the flag. Good, okay, good. You already know Vajira? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. <laughs> yes, Shambhu. Yes, yes. I heard. Not yet. Yes, yes. <laughs> Vajira and I uh, get along because I, I speak Singhala, so he speaks Singhala with me. He, he wants me to learn more. Okay. So I'll translate what you said just Oh, now. okay, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> Dhamma 
कारण जेव्हा तुम्ही चिवर घेता किंवा कुठल्याही गम्माच्या ह्याच्यात राहता तर तुम्हाला पहिले सगळे शिलाचं पालन करावंच लागतं जर तुम्ही शिलाचं पालन केलं नाही कोणते शिल घेतले नाही अर्थ शिल घेतले नाही तर गम्म आचरण करता येत नाही तेव्हा त्यामुळे आचरण जे महत्वाचं आहे चरण संपन्न जे आहे आपल्याला जर व्हायचं असेल तर शिलाचं पालन फार गरजेचं आहे असं थोडक्यात आणि ती त्यांची परीक्षेचा अभ्यास आहे तो आपण आता थोडासा केला Okay, we also studied with you, the window here. Okay, good, <laughs> good, yes, just a little drop, yes. Hey, that's just enough, I mean, we don't need to go into big details, but just knowing that is, you know, it just already it brings up faith, isn't it? So. <laughs> and now together, together. Together, yes. Ah, yes. Good. How do I say that in Marathi? Doni. 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 Ah, Doni. Both. Both. Yes. Singular. Together means Boroba. Boroba. Ekatra. Okay. Ekatra. Together. Ah. Yes. 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 Ekatra. Ah. Okay. Good. <laughs> Very good. I was given. Um, Actually, I was given today by, um, mm, I forget his name. He's another Bhagat. Who is uh, the, what's his name again? Uh, I forget. He, there's another Bhagat who gave me a... Uh, Sandeep. 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 Where is he? Ah, there he is. Who gave me Pindapate today. And then he also gave me the, the Devanagiri uh, Vinaya. Uh, the Patimokha. Patimokha. Yes, yes. Was it yours? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's not what I thought. <laughs> Good. Many merits. Ah, yes. Devanagiri. Yes. Yes. Ah, yes, yes. That's his son. That's his wife. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, good. <laughs> yes. Yeah, in Sri Lanka, they drill uh, holes, two holes in it with the string. Yes. In the box, yes, they also do that. Yes. So very good. We've uh, we've gone through two qualities <laughs> of the Buddha. Samma sambuddho vija charana sampan. Good. We have five more hours to go. <laughs> so what is next? Next. Quality. Should we call it? Or should we, can we? Okay, okay, okay. We finish? Okay. Buddha is the greatest teacher of all times. <laughs> Just believe me. <laughs> Good. Okay, well. So, I hope that your sadda was increased a little bit and the panya was increased a little bit. And now you can have a direct understanding of the Buddha as the greatest teacher. There is more to explore and then I invite you to the retreat that we're going to have. So you can actually experience it for yourself. <laughs>